Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. We've been waiting a long time for this, the save point from Genki, Genki. Uh, this is an external enclosure, much like the Quiz Lab drive I've reviewed before, but uh, everyone's been kind of waiting for this and they think it's some sort of a savior of the Nakatomi hostages. So let's take a look at it. Um, I do like the way it looks. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I like the form factor. Feels good in the hand there. What else do we have? We have, it looks like a cable. This is a highly rated cable too. That's great that they included this. Let's take a look uh, inside here. We have the magnetic ring that you'll attach to the deck. And of course, uh, a small manual for those that might need it. Looks pretty good. There's even color in there, amazing. So let's get this uh, cable out and take a look at it. Now, uh, here we go. The cable's really nice. It's high quality. It's uh, well rated. Like I said, usually, um, you know, you always have to worry about not getting a good rated cable. Here we go. Here's the unit itself. It's got sort of an abstract design. Uh, again, I like it, but you can already tell by the where these are positioned that we're gonna have some problems here in the near future. And uh, we have our ring here, the ring attachment. Should be easy peasy. But here we go, a hex head screw. Great, can't they just use a Phillips head screw? What's the deal with that? There's no better on the Quiz Lab. It uses like a, a star or a Torx. So let me see what I got in my toolkit to get this thing open. Now you smart, clever viewers noticed that there was like a little Allen wrench in the bag that I set aside earlier. I missed it. So I had to go and try to find a tool. Now, uh, pay close attention that there's an Allen wrench in there. Uh, you won't make the same mistake I made. I wouldn't even back looking to see if there was some sort of a, a tool included a one hour later. So I had to go and find another toolkit. So unfortunately for me, uh, this took a lot more effort than it should have, but not for you if you use the proper tool that's included. Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, look at that. There's the inside of it, pretty straightforward. We have our capacitor here, controller chip, a um, couple of thermal pads, which is nice. They're already exposed, so they're already sticky and tacky, so you don't have to peel anything off there. And let's take a look at what's inside the Quiz Lab, since we're gonna be doing some comparative work here. Uh, same sort of idea, this is where I already have the drive in. It's a little bit bigger, of course. Uh, the capacitor looks close to the same, maybe a little bit bigger in the uh, save point. But again, uh, so the uh, the Quiz Lab, of course, has this little screw, it took me forever to get that off. And we're gonna put it inside the save point. Now this is a Windows 11 boot drive. So we're gonna be able to do some testing. I like this bit, it's plastic. So I'm kind of worried it might break, but you turn it so that the, uh, the notch is in a particular spot. You put the drive in and then you turn it so that the notch is holding in the drive. That's, that's what I would wish that the <laughs> Quiz Lab would have had. But you only have to do this once, right? As long as you're not taking the drive in and out for reviews like me. All right, so here we have power and we have data. They're both at the top. And you know, that's, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, self, how are we gonna attach this where it's gonna make sense, right? Am I gonna attach it this way? No, you can't really attach it that way because then it covers the power, but you could use it without power. Here's my Steam Deck. I got a mag plate that I permanently installed. It's about the same size as the circle. It should do the job just fine for what we're doing. Um, that's what I use for my Quiz Lab. So yeah, it sticks right on there. No problem whatsoever. Great. So um, let's plug this guy in and see what sort of options we have for running cables. Okay, so the drive is powered by the deck, not optimum. Well, I can't really turn it sideways. That's gonna interfere. Let's start, uh, let's see. Well, that's nice and secure there. What can we do to make this better? Well, let's see, we'll plug it in sideways. Sideways should be good. If I can get my fat hands all over it. Okay, there we go. It's covering the power button, but say la vie. I could flip it the other way. It would cover the vents a little bit. That might be better as it redirects the uh, cabling outside of where my fingers might be. So that, that works out okay. But now we're stuck with this power. Uh, much like the Quiz Lab, these things were not designed for the Steam Deck. They were designed for something else. They just happened to work for the Steam Deck. And this one's no different. If you take the uh, connector on the top, then you have the power going to the, it, it's ridiculous. See, the power goes this way and it just, it, it's very similar. It doesn't, it doesn't line up right. Um, so when I use the Quiz Lab uh, here, I end up having to use an adapter. Uh, and this actually works with this cable. I don't even need the adapter. So the Quiz Lab works well with this cable. Um, but in order to get the, um, the save point to behave, I'm gonna need like an elbow right? I'm going to need something to redirect the power because you can't turn it. If you 
I'll see if I can make this work somehow. Um, that is not going to fit over there. It's it's unfortunate. This uh, this could have been designed differently or better. I don't know why they insist on putting power and data in a completely arbitrary position, at least for Steam Deck owners. But they advertise that it's for the Steam Deck, so it kind of isn't. So let's go ahead and hook this guy back up. We're going to use an elbow to solve the problem. Just make sure that you get an elbow that's properly rated. I'll have a link in the description for this one. This one is rated for 100 uh, PD 100 watts. And this will help redirect the power just like it did with the Queez Lab for me using the other cable. And we can plug in the power and it, the power cable goes down into your lap like maybe you would hope. And everything is cozy. So we do have a shooting solution here, but we did need that additional elbow to make this work right. All right, now it's time, of course, for the speed test. That's right, we're gonna use K-Disc and we are going to speed test this guy. And here are our final results. I knew you didn't wanna sit and watch that whole thing. Here's our final results. We're gonna make note of these because we're gonna test it against the Queez Lab. Because who knows if those numbers are good, right? I mean, you can tell that they're certainly not the SSD. Uh, but first, let's do the power test. With the save point, even under load and charging, it maxes out about 29 to 30 watts, which unfortunately isn't great, right? I mean, there is almost uh, eight to 10 watts being dropped across. Now, if we plug in the power directly, you can see we're getting 38 watts in under load and charging using the exact same benchmarks. So yeah, but the Queez Lab does the exact same thing. It drops power across the drive, which is unfortunate. Now, you'll also notice that after I pulled without disconnecting, I can't reconnect the drive. It's one of these things in SteamOS that if the drive ends up being corrupted and it's NTFS, you, you got to go and fix it. So I'm sitting here trying to mount this drive and I can't because when I unplugged it, it corrupted the drive, but it shouldn't because there's a capacitor in there. But there's no way to do this other than to go and repair the drive. Now, you can repair the drive on the deck. I unplugged it, took it over to my Windows PC, plugged it in and did a fix over there. And we bring it back and we're gonna hook it up, and do our test. All right, trying to get it to stick back there, but the stupid stand is in the way. I'll just let it hang there. So now we're gonna run this yet again. You can see our old results. We're also gonna put it up on the screen for you so that you can kind of compare and contrast yourself. We'll put the save point data in the bottom left. Here's what we had for reads and writes. Sequential, sequential, random, random, read and write. Let's do the exact same thing. Now I can mount the drive. Perfect, after I fixed it. And uh, of course we will select it and redo our test. That's the old numbers. Now we're gonna get the new numbers with the Queez Lab. Wow, <laughs> what a difference. We're talking like twice the speeds in reads and writes sequentially. Um, not a huge uh, performance difference in terms of non-sequentials. In fact, the uh, save point kicks a couple of numbers there, but for the overall score, listen, the Queez Lab kicks its butt. And we're talking about sequential reads. That's loading games, right? Uh, loading big ROM files. So yeah, I mean, there's really no comparison. And just to show you, uh, to be completely fair, that doing the same benchmark also shows about 29 watts being uh, sent in which is um, not good. It should be more like 38 watts. So they all suffer from the same sort of thing. It takes a lot of power out. All right, so what are the pros of this guy? It's aesthetically pleasing. It's got a nice included cable, extra thermal pad. Uh, SSD fastener is good on the inside. And of course, there's a brand recognition. Queez Labs, nobody knows about that, but some people know about uh, GenKit or GenKit. Uh, let's look at the uh, bad parts though. Comparatively expensive, right? It's uh, about double the price of the Queez Lab on sale. It's half the speed in sequential operations, poor design for power in, just like the Queez Lab. Failed the power pull test. That could be big for some people, eight to 10 watts lost. And of course you need to bring your own tool to open, which you really don't because uh, I just missed it. Well, that's it. I hope you like what we're doing here. If you do like, subscribe, hit the bell and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks everybody. Take care.